In this episode, we'll take a look at the Sennheiser XSWD portable lavalier set. This entire episode is recorded with the XSWD portable lavalier set. I have the lavalier microphone right here, wearing the transmitter down here, and this is all being recorded into my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now, who is this really made for? First of all, the tagline that Sennheiser has for this is, as easy to use as a cable. And I think really that kind of condenses down the whole use case for this. This is an entry-level wireless microphone system. It's made to be super simple to use. It's made for people that don't have time to fuss with audio while they're recording for solo shooters, things of that nature. Now, all that is really cool, and it comes with some trade-offs, but it is a very, very simple system to use. So if you don't know a lot about wireless, you don't know about what frequencies you should be operating at, you really don't have time to mess with those things, this could be a really good option. Now, this particular one has a 3.5 millimeter output, so that means that it's really made for cameras like hybrid cameras that have 3.5 millimeter microphone inputs. That's going to be most DSLRs, most hybrid cameras, most mirrorless cameras, and things like the Pocket Cinema 4K. Now, in addition to this and things we won't be covering here, but Sennheiser does have other accessories that can go with this and other transmitters and other receivers. There are some made for guitars, some with XLR outputs, so on and so forth. We're not going to cover those in depth, but it is a very versatile system with lots of options for different types of cameras and situations. Let's give you some audio samples. Now here's an audio sample with me talking into the ME2 Mark II microphone. And again, this is going to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The only thing we've done to the audio here is loudness normalize it. That is to say, we've just brought it up to a standard level so that you could hear it on a consistent basis. One of the things a lot of people don't realize is that oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes louder sounds better. And what I mean by that is if you have two samples and one's a little bit louder than the other one, usually people will say, for whatever psychological reason, the louder one sounds better. So that's important to understand. The reason I'm not doing any other processing except for loudness normalizing to a standard level is that I wanted you to be able to hear what it sounds like exactly right out of the camera. So this is what you got. Now, one of the things people will ask, well, can, you know, what's the noise floor like? Well, <laughs> that's going to depend on the input that you're recording to. Let's give you a few moments of silence here so you can get a sense for that. Here for comparison, we're recording with the RODELINK system. So this is the RODELINK Filmmaker Kit. I have the uh, Rode Lavalier right here. And uh, the nice thing about this system is that you do have control over the output level at the receiver. You can uh, attenuate by, you can, you can bring it in at 0 dB, attenuate by 10 dB, or attenuate by 20 dB. And then on the transmitter here, you have options for... Uh, 0 dB plus 10 dB or plus 20 dB. So you have a little bit more control over the overall road link system. All right, so the next step in mixing the dry ingredients is to add cocoa powder. So we have coconut flour, and now we're going to put an equal amount of cocoa powder in. One quarter cup. There's that. Okay. Mixing that together. One thing that makes the SSWD very simple to use is that it uses a 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. Now, you might ask yourself, why is that easier to use? Well, the reason why is that, number one, you can use it in pretty much any region of the world. It's the same frequency that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi use. So that's really great. That means you're not going to have to worry about, do I have the right frequency? I'm going to be traveling and doing a shoot somewhere else in a different country. You don't have to worry about that. Pretty much every country in the world will allow you to use this frequency without any sort of license. So that's really good. Its max output level is 10 milliwatts. For consumer grade wireless, that's pretty typical. Maybe a little bit on the high end, surprisingly, for some of the systems. One of the really cool things about the XSWD is that it's constantly searching within the 2.4 gigahertz range for open channels that don't have any interference. And it will actually hop to those very, very quickly. So that's really good so that you don't get a lot of interference from Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or other wireless activity in that same range. So we've got the Sennheiser XSWD and uh, right now I'm standing about probably 15 feet away from the camera-ish. I'm going to walk down this way. We've got a, several barriers in the way here. We've got a lot of Wi-Fi activity in the area as you saw here. 
um, lots of different Wi-Fi networks which are using the same frequency as this transmission system. So let's walk down this way. I'll keep talking and we'll see how we do. So the transmitter pack is down here on the front of me. So that'll give us a sense for how this is working. We're probably 50-ish feet away at this point. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, walking down this way, I would say at this point, we're about 70, 75 feet away and walk around the corner here. Now this is where we go out of line of sight. And this is probably the biggest stress test we can do to see how this system does. Um, probably about 100 feet away and around the corner. So let's see how that does. Then we're gonna walk back. We have a variety of different barriers in the way here. And these are not full-fledged walls, but little sort of panels, office divider panels. And we'll see what that gets us. So. There's a, te a distance test with the XSWD. Okay, we are going to do another test here. Uh, this will be the outdoor distance test. The idea here is I don't want anything nearby that the signal could bounce off of. So no walls, no buildings. Closest building's about 150, no, 200 feet that way behind the camera. And I'm wearing the transmitter here. Let's see what we got. I'm about uh, 25, 30 feet away right now. So I'm gonna walk this way, walking down the hill. And we're probably picking up some wind now because I've got the wind in my face. This will also give you an idea of how the microphone sounds when you've got wind blowing across the capsule. It's a little bit protected, but not much. It's got the jacket on the, the sides. And uh, at this point, I think we're probably uh, here. Actually, 100 feet. That's we were over 100 yards, a little over 100 meters, just for reference. We're going to work out for this video too. Bringing it back. Don't know, you probably are hearing less wind interference now, the wind's at my back. So, there's a little look at the distance capabilities of the XSWD lavalier set. Another thing that's very unique about the XSWD is that there are no settings. There's one button on the unit that is used to turn it on and it's used to mute the transmitter and that's and to pair and that's all it does. Here I'm recording into the Panasonic GH5S. I've got the receiver here, the mic right here and the receiver up on top of the Panasonic GH5S feeding into the microphone input. This is one of the tricks now for most camera systems, because this doesn't have an input or a gain control, you don't choose the input level, um, it just operates at unity gain, sort of its optimized level for the preamplifier within the transmitter. The problem is that the Panasonic GH series of cameras have a pretty hot microphone input. So you can see when I talk pretty loud here, we're going to start clipping. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for the Panasonic GH5 for 5S users out there. Don't know about the three and before, but uh, definitely the four and beyond have really these pretty hot microphone inputs. And so could be a little bit of a problem for you because you don't have an, an ability within the XSWD system to reduce the output level. Now there is one option in the Panasonic GH5 and the GH5S, there is a limiter. And what that does is it's supposed to catch those um, overmodulation audio. That is to say the audio that gets too loud for the digital system. So Let's see how that works here. I'm gonna talk really loud, really quickly, and just see if that clips when we're talking into the XSWD digital system with the limiter on on the Panasonic GH5S. Power, that's another thing that's very simple here with the XSWD system. The, both the transmitter and the receiver have batteries built into them. In my test, we got a total of five hours and 14 minutes of powering time in pretty typical circumstances where the transmitter and the receiver were about 15 feet away. And uh, that, that seems really quite good. Now, what's interesting is you can also plug in a USB-C power source and you can power these for a lot longer. And actually by that, I should say, it has a USB-C input on both the transmitter and the receiver, but it comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable. So you don't have to have a USB-C power bank, <laughs> um, but it can power both the receiver and the transmitter for, for as long as you need to, as long as your power bank has power. In terms of charging time, to get a full charge from zero up to full takes about three hours. 
you can actually get to about 50% in one hour. So that's another thing. If you are doing a longer shoot, you can take the pack and charge it up during lunch, for example. And within just a single hour, you'll get back up to 50%, which should give you about two and a half hours of powering time. So that's a consideration as well. One thing to think about is that when you're using a digital wireless microphone system like this is latency. And in fact, some wireless systems that are digital have a significant amount of latency that makes it so that the audio ends up a little bit out of sync with the video. And that can be problematic, but that's not an issue here with the XSWD. It has less than four milliseconds of latency, which is very good for a digital wireless system. In terms of build quality, we're looking at something that is almost entirely plastic with a few exceptions. Of course, the clip on the transmitter has some metal on it, but for the most part, it's plastic. It seems like a decent grade plastic and based on its weight, it feels like if you dropped it, you'd probably be just fine. It probably would not destroy things. So I think in terms of durability, it's going to be fine for most circumstances. The size is actually very small and here it is compared to the road link. You can see it's a lot smaller. It is still a little bit on the thick side. So again, professional location sound mixers wouldn't necessarily choose this particular form factor because it's hard to hide under clothing. But for those of us that aren't really that concerned with hiding things under clothing, you're shooting YouTube videos, things of that nature, interviews, then this is probably not going to be an issue at all. And then finally, because the transmitter and the receiver look almost identical, how do you tell the difference? There's a little logo on the back that tells you whether or not this is the transmitter or the receiver. Of course, the transmitter has a microphone. The receiver shows the camera logo. Now, as we mentioned multiple times, this is a very simple system to use. You get one button and one LED light. And so how do you set the input level? Again, you don't really set the input level. That's automatic. It's already set to Unity, so there's nothing to change there. The buttons can be used to pair the unit initially, and the LED shows you the pairing status. So when it's blinking green, it's looking for its mate. When they have found each other, they both turn green. Then once they're both solid green, this also shows you your battery status. Now, this takes a bit more work to memorize exactly what the different battery statuses are based on the color of the LED and how much it's blinking and so on and so forth. So you do need to keep this quick guide on hand or memorize what these different things mean. One thing you can also do with the button is you can mute the transmitter from the receiver, which is really nice. So if you have a talent that and you're taking a break and they need to go off and use the restroom, you can mute them. <laughs> or if you're doing a live event and someone is prepping to go on stage, you want to mute them while they're prepping. But once they get on stage, you might want to unmute them and you have that control from the receiver. The microphone that comes with the kit is the ME2 version 2. And this is pretty good. This is actually much better than the original ME2, which I had with my Sennheiser G3 kit. I didn't really like the sound of that microphone on most people. This one actually sounds quite a bit better. They've revoiced it. So overall, I think it now sounds better with more voices than the older version did. The older version sounded absolutely awful on my voice and it didn't really sound great with most people's voices. I think this one sounds a lot better. So that's a good step forward. It also comes with an alligator clip to make it easy to clip onto people. However, the microphone is a little bit on the larger side for a lavalier, maybe medium to large. So that does make it a little bit harder to hide it if you are trying to do that. Just something to keep in mind. You could still hide it underneath clothing, but it's not super tiny like some of the other professional microphones. And it does come with a warranty of two years. So I think pretty much the number one question I expect to get is, well, I have the Rode Link. Should I upgrade to the Sennheiser XSWD? Or I'm in the market. Should I get the Rode Link or should I get the XSWD? These are probably the closest competitors, these two systems. And I think it really depends on the particular feature set that you want. If you want something that's small, if that's a very high priority for you, I think the XSWD is probably a good choice if you're willing to give up a few things. The nice thing about the Rode, for example, is it has readout screens. There are little OLED screens where you can actually see the battery status and you can see which channel you're attached to and you can see whether or not you're muted. That's really pretty nice to have that. The XSWD accomplishes the same thing with a blinking LED light, so you have to kind of memorize those colors. But that can be a worthy trade-off if size is more important to you in terms of having a very small transmitter and a small receiver. One other advantage I think that the Rode has that the XSWD does not have is the ability to adjust the input level on the transmitter and the output level on the receiver. So if you are working with a Panasonic GH series camera, for example, and you will be recording things where people may be laughing a lot or yelling a lot, then it may make sense to have a little bit more control there. And that's where the Rode Link may be a better choice. However, I will say, I think the XSWD is a very good value. 
runs about $350 for this particular kit. You can see the link down below for current pricing. One really nice thing about the XSWD system, just like the Rode Link, is that there are a variety of other add-on transmitters and receivers. So for example, if you wanted to use a dynamic handheld microphone, there is an XLR plug-on transmitter. That's really nice. Just one note about that, it does not supply phantom power. So if you're trying to use that with a shotgun microphone that needs phantom power from an external source, but you could use it with a shotgun microphone that supplies its own power. So there is also a receiver that has an XLR output. So if you're working with a cinema camera or if you wanted to connect something to an audio recorder that has XLR inputs, that's a good option as well. So overall, I think Sennheiser has done a really nice job with the XSWD. Is it perfect for everybody? No, of course not. There's no such thing as a perfect product that fits everybody's needs. However, I think for an entry-level wireless system, they really kind of hit a nice set of features. And especially for those who are looking for a very small transmitter and receiver, this is a pretty good bet. So hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. <music>